We love to talk about music on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 460 is with Joe Mansman from the Midnight Revival Band. Cool. Arrow, how are you? Doing very well. How about you? Good, good. I'm actually... Um about to jump into rehearsal here. I was going to say, I thought I heard it. It sounds like some guitars in the background. Yeah, yeah. Somebody got got my guys dialing in an amp. <laughs> so now when, when you say that you're about ready to go into a rehearsal, are you getting ready to go out on the road then? Uh, no, not at the moment. Well, we're, uh, we've got plans to go on the road uh, this fall. Right now we're, uh, we're promoting our single with, uh, you know, just a couple of local and regional gigs from where we are. Um. And, uh, you know, just getting a little bit of heat behind our song and then hitting the road in the fall. Absolutely. And and that heat is it, it's going to heat up pretty fast because the song Take It Easy is very attractive. I got to ask you, are do you guys get to the hook of this song really fast? I mean, is, is that the way the music world is changing where it's, it, you know, it's like get to it so they can sing with us? Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, back in the, you know, 50s, 60s. Uh, because of the you know the the size of vinyls and how much audio that they can hold, bands would typically limit their singles to about two minutes. In the '70s and '80s, you know, when there was a whole lot more money to be made in music, you know, bands, uh, you know, were getting away with, you know, you know, seven, eight minutes sometimes. To, you know, I mean, look at Freebird, for example. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's since you know, with uh, with the rise of uh, you know the digital music world. Um, you know, people have shorter attention spans again. So yeah, bands now are kind of putting things out that are, you know, three, four minutes. But um, with this song in particular, we actually, the actual version of the song is over six minutes long. Wow. Um, you know, what people are hearing right now on Spotify is our radio cut. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I love the way that you have put that guitar right there in the very beginning, because I mean, so so much music has been lost because guitars have been taken out of the out of the, the persuasion here. The, and it's just it's just so fascinating to see how you guys are doing it. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you know, we uh, we have two fantastic uh, players. Uh, we have my brother, Alex, who uh, uh, plays guitar. And then we have dollars. Um and uh, they're both fantastic, fantastic musicians. And um, that song actually has a whole lot of uh, lead work on it. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of stuff that we cut out for, you know, a radio version of it. But um, I- I'm not sure if you've seen the video for I the have. song yet. But, I have. Uh, our yep. music video for it features the full version. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They, the bathtub band. That's the. That, that's like one of the superstars of the movie. Yeah, yeah. That was our uh, our good friend uh, Jexka Veritas. Uh, she is a uh, you know an alt uh, tattoo model, and she did a, she did a video with us uh, last year around this time actually, for a song called Renegade Love, and um, you know she was amazing in it. You know we did like a Breakfast Club kind of vibe, and uh, yeah, and we called her back in for this one. But um, and yeah, that that whole tub scene, what a <laughs> what an amazing uh, thing that was. Just the, how it turned out was awesome. But I mean that whole like what thirty seconds of it that we show. Yeah. That whole ordeal took almost two hours. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we put that tub out in the swamp, man. What's so fascinating about the video is that it's like you, you guys uh, re- went back into old school metal and, and said, hey, look, let's do it like White Snake did it. Let's let's go do it this way because people need to talk about this video. That's how we're going to get them to follow us. Yeah. Um, actually, that the, the way that even came about, we actually had a, a completely different uh, treatment for that video because we were going, we were going to shoot it back in February um, and we had some lineup changes, which – uh, caused that to get delayed uh, until um, early April, um, but by the time that we had uh, uh, gotten around to uh, you know wanting to give it a second try, uh, I changed the treatment you know only the week before, and then we executed what you see, you know, in just a couple days' time. Wow, wow! Your your vocals on the song, dude. Did did it fall right into place, or was it something that you had to go in there and kind of work a little bit? Because I mean, you it is spot on and it matches everything else that's going with this song wow thank you so much i really appreciate that thank you um yeah i mean i i you know it's it's i guess kind of easy for me uh when i step into a vocal booth um you know i've been a singer for a long time i've been in and out of bands uh you know for you know close to 20 years and uh, i've always been placed in the role of lead singer somehow uh i'm actually a bass player (laughs) wow but uh 
Um, but I somehow always ended up in the lead singer role and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of time developed, you know, singing songs. This one, this, this tune, um, went through a lot of changes. I mean, you know, before we even tracked its, you know, uh, final version, we must have demoed it six, seven times. And there was all, there were always some, some melodies that changed, uh, vocally, um, you know, around this song. And then when we did finally step into the studio to do it, um, you know, we had a fantastic producer, Brandon Kapoor, who yep. himself is a great yep. singer, yep. you know, who coached me through a couple of things here and there. But, you know, we we tracked that whole song in just two days. OK, I'm going to yeah, I was going to ask you about Brandon, because Brandon is known for his ear, his vision, his path. I mean, I mean, what, what's it like to work with him? Uh, he's awesome. I mean, he is uh, himself a very, very um, uh honed musician mm -hmm. uh he, he's a he's an amazing singer uh great uh keys player and um we uh you know our, our previous records we had often just kind of done on our own and uh this was the first time that we had stepped into a studio in you know eight years maybe and um you know uh, we picked the perfect guy for the job because the band did want to go in a more melodic metal direction uh you know we've been dabbling in the whole glam rock um, thing now for the past two years and uh, it's still kind of a little foreign to us you know uh, we, we came from a southern rock background and uh, uh, dabbling in this was uh, you know hearing like shimmering keys and, uh, and wanting more shimmering vocals like he was the guy that was able to like you know kind of see that vision and make it come to life for us you know you, with you talking about coming from that southern rock uh, background now that explains a lot because one of the things that i wanted to talk to you about is is that this this can't be just a rock song this has to be an adult top 40 song as well are you going to push it to that level that's the hope man um you know we uh we you know we just started seeing that uh you know we're being picked up on uh you know rock radio in philly and uh phoenix and in new york and um, so the idea is that, yes, uh, you know, we, we're trying to push it to, uh, you know, to um, to popular radio. Yes. Being from that upstate New York area, I mean, you guys have got some big roots up there in that part of the world. I mean, do you, do you feel like there's some weight on your shoulder saying we still have to represent? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of, you know, we've been staples of, you know, the scene now since we were kids. You know, we're, we're in our late 20s, early 30s. And, uh, you know, we've been in and out of so many bands that have done so many things. And, you know, uh, a lot of us have, you know, famous friends who've gone on to do amazing, amazing things, you know, like touring with Skinner, for example. And, <laughs> um, you know, so so we come from a really cool, uh, you know, talented uh, area of upstate New York. Uh, you know, we're 40 minutes past Albany. And uh, there's a really, really thriving music scene out this way. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, with the, the Southern rock background, you know, we're we're mountain people you know we live in the mountains <laughs> you know um but uh you know we we used to be um you know really uh really enamored by bands like uh leonard skinnard and uh maylene and the sons of disaster and crowbot and bands like that who you know had a, a really deep uh, blues rock influence and um a lot of our early records you know uh were very much in uh in that vein well, that your storytellers. I mean, even Dolly Parton will tell you the people from the mountains that the only way they could get the news out was they would create songs and it would go from song from from one town to another town. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to do it, man. And um, uh, as far as like you know, storytelling goes, you know, I I don't try to necessarily tell a story through a song, but uh, there's I don't, there's like a subconscious thing that happens sometimes where you know you might write a song that you know it it means something to you at that moment, but might mean more to you at a different time. And I, I guess that's what they say about songs being open-ended, you know, like it, it could take on a different meaning to anybody at any time for any situation. I think that's why people like, you know, emotionally attach themselves to songs that they hear uh, during certain life situations, mm -hmm. for example, you know? So now in, with a song like take it easy, do, have you guys thought about where does it, where does it fit on the playlist? Do you do it early? Do you do it in the middle? What, what happens? Uh, so <clears throat> we've been playing it out for, um, you know, nine ten months maybe um and uh it typically lives in uh in the middle of a set yep, yep. um however uh a couple days after the song we finished tracking the song uh we played a sold out show with Dokken and uh, and we we only had a you know a 25 minute time slot and we decided to close with that song just you know we, we kind of like to read the audience a little bit at shows yep. and 
and uh, we closed with Take It Easy and it went over so well. I mean, um, it's it was one of those tunes for us that like, uh, it, it's, it stops the room. Yeah. You know, like yeah. even if even if you're a band nobody's ever heard of and, you know, people are there to see the headliner. They, they don't necessarily care about, you know, the opening band who's got 15, 20 minutes. But that's that song that gets the room to stop for us. Yeah, because it, it like I said in the beginning, I mean, the, the, the hook of the song is so attractive that it gets you involved with the song. It, you're not just sitting there listening to it live. All of a sudden you're going, what the hell is this? Man, this this has this has my attention. Wow. Thanks, man. Big compliment. Thank you very much. Um, and you know, again, that, I mean, we, that's not what it was meant to be. You know, we don't go into songwriting necessarily with that attitude, but you know, we're, we're really happy that, uh, you know, we, we, we landed all the markers on this one, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, no regrets. We were so happy with how it came out. Did you guys all get to be in the studio at the same time or was it one track at a time? Uh, we were all in the studio at the same time nice. and we, we that, that is how we record things one track at a time. But you know, when we do studio sessions, the entire band is typically there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, you got everybody gotta, has input on every little thing. Yeah. Well, you've got, you've got to have that eye to eye contact. I mean, that's, that's the thing that's hurting radio right now is that everybody's still remote doing their jobs at home. And, and, and if you, whoever your partner is in radio, you can't see their facial expressions. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, that's actually one of the things that bothers me about, uh, you know, the digital music age is that like, you know, albums and things like that are being recorded, you know, uh, where the band mem- members, uh, you know, they're, they're halfway across the country and they're, they're just sending each other tracks and putting albums together that way. I am still an advocate for bands uh, being together in one room and making those things happen. And, you know, whether you are the primary singer songwriter, you know, uh, humbly taking in- input from everybody and everybody collectively putting something together because in the end, especially if you're out on the road playing these songs night after night after night after night, you want that song to mean something to your players too, not just your audience. You want your players in the bands to have an emotional attachment to them. I mean, even if they didn't write those lyrics, you want that to mean something to them and involving them on every single step of the creative process is extremely important. Always has been to me. The the new Elvis movie, which is put out by Baz Luhrmann, is out. They show a side of Elvis that we didn't get to see, which was the blood, sweat, and tears. And and that man was in pain many times when he was on that stage. Have you seen it yet? I haven't. No, but I've been meaning to. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm a big Elvis guy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my my keys player Chris, uh, his uh, his part time job is actually uh, yeah he 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 plays with with Elvis. Oh man. <laughs> so. Yeah, he, he travels around the country doing keys for Elvis. Oh, well, see, and it, it, why, it, there's one, that, that's what I love about these movies nowadays is that they're, they're finally telling the truth of what you guys go through on a day-to-day basis. And even when Elvis, before he became Elvis, they're showing him out there on the road and the struggles and, and what's required of what you guys have to do. It's almost like being on a minor league baseball team bus. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It, uh it's definitely not, you know, the, the fantasy life sometimes, especially when, you know, you really depend on, you know, hey, that that 50 bucks to throw in your <laughs> gas tank and feed six guys. But, you know, it is what it is, uh, you know, labor love. <laughs> so what's the website where people can go and find the song, find out more about you guys and start buying some merchandise? Um, so the main hub where you can find everything uh, on our band is the Midnight Revival Band dot rocks. And uh, that'll, uh, you know, that's got links to all of our social media sites. Uh, we're literally on everything. Um, you know, we use Facebook and Instagram uh, for the most part. Um, but, you know, people can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, where they'll find the video now. This is actually the, you know, the first uh, video that we've uh, released on our own in a while. We've, we've typically had, uh, you know, bigger channels, usually like, uh, like European, like hard rock channels, you yeah. know, typically release our videos for us. But this is the first one we've done on our own in a couple of years. And it was a, a good decision to do that. But yeah, uh, midnight, Re- the midnight revival band dot rocks. So what's it like to be in control rather than relinquishing control? Uh, you know what? I, I don't really, uh, know. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've often ha- had control of, uh, you know, uh, my own music. Nice. And, uh, you know, in most cases, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've done things with a couple of indie labels and things here and there, but I, I've never had problems getting the rights to my music back. You know, I've never had problems with, you know, like streaming royalties and things like that. I, I, I've never encountered that per se, but just, uh, you know, being able to, uh, 
put something out and and reach people without a whole lot of help is always is always good i love it dude you got to come back to this show anytime in the future especially when you guys hit the road we need to get the word out there so people can know way ahead of time where you guys are going to be landing i appreciate it thanks so much Errol. well you be brilliant today okay sir thank you so much rock on man